even more present for uh, our school. Uh, our board of nine is uh, very active, uh, very dynamic. And I'd like to take a, a moment and just introduce uh, each of our members. So as I go through, I would like to have each board member uh, raise their hand. So everybody knows who you are. Uh, first off is Chris Ferris, our vice president. Uh, Chris holds one of two uh, at large seats. Tim Evers, our treasurer. Uh, Tim represents the Hartley Lakeside area. Amy Hammer, our clerk. Amy holds the Merton seat. Uh, Daryl Benneker, Daryl holds the Lake Country seat. Tim Langer represents Stone Bay. Uh, Brandon Miller, Brandon holds the Richmond seat. Craig Thompson, he holds the second at large seat. And Lynn Volapans, who holds the North Lake seat. Uh, additionally, I'd like to recognize and thank uh, Laura Myra, our superintendent, and Jeff Gross, once again, our director of business services, as well as Kate McGraw, who's uh, Laura's administrative assistant and uh, certainly uh, great administrative support for our board. So I would like to officially call uh, to order our mm -hmm. annual meeting. Um, at this point in the meeting, I will act as temporary chairperson until a uh, uh, a chairperson is uh, elected to run the meeting, and uh, now I welcome you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So our first order of business is to elect chairperson for the, the meeting. The person so elected may or may not be a member of the school board. If the meeting is adjourned to another date, the same chairperson will preside. If you make a nomination, please state your name so it can be properly included in the minutes. And uh, just as a reminder, uh, only residents of the Arrowhead School District are allowed to vote this evening. So with that, I will entertain nominations for chair of the meeting. My name is Chris Ferris, and I would like to nom nominate uh, our board member, Daryl Benneker. And Kim Schubert, I would second that. So Daryl has a nomination to chair of the meeting this evening. But do we have any other nominations? Okay, nominations are closed. Uh, so, um, all those, we have a motion uh, to have Daryl Bedeker chair our meeting tonight. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I give you Daryl Bedeker. Thank you so much. So let's um, start with the treasurer's report. It is um, it, it's on page 15 and 18 on the annual um, report document. That does everyone have copies? If you need extras, um, just raise your hand and we'll get those to you. And just to um, make a note too that the treasury report will be available, the complete treasury report will be available in the district office when the 21-2022 audit is complete. Um, any questions? Comments? So 
So I'm going to hand it over now to um, Laura Myra to give us um, share the great story of the 2021-2022 um, school year in review. Good evening, I'm Laura Myra. I'm a superintendent here at the Arrowhead Union High School District. And I have the pleasure of sharing mostly great news. In fact, fabulous news. All the good things that happen in our school. Now I will preface that with there are a couple of slides that you might consider great news or you might consider lousy news. And I'll let you decide. That's the hook, now you're gonna listen. <laughs> so at Arrowhead, we have the vision to be an educational leader in creating pathways for students to embrace the opportunities of tomorrow. Our mission is to empower students to be engaged, confident, continuous learners who utilize the essential skills to collaborate and contribute within the local and global community. We have four enduring goals as part of our focus plan. Those enduring goals are noted here in a very simple manner but when at, in actuality, there are lots of strategies and action plans underneath each of those goals. But these goals carry us year after year. Those strategies will change according to the needs. But we want to prepare students for success beyond high school graduation. We want to foster a nurturing, positive learning culture here in our school. We want to communicate effectively within our school and outside of our school. And we want to advance facility infrastructure and technology to support student learning. Jeff already talked about a lot of our fiscal information, so I won't take the time to go through all of this information. But essentially, we're a very fiscally responsible district. You saw some of these numbers from Jeff's slide. And this is one of the slides where I'd say it could be considered good news or it could be considered lousy news. In terms of other union high schools, so trying to compare apples to apples with union high schools, our maximum tax revenue and mill rate is quite low. So that's great news as a taxpayer. You're not having to pay as much for an education that is, I would contend, better than any of the other nine union high school districts. If you look at achievement scores, student achievement scores, Arrowhead is higher than all of those, your tax dollars are lower. So good news, great bargain. On the other hand, you might think, well, that's kind of lousy news because we're spending less on our school. Does that mean our facilities are going downhill? Does that mean we're not attracting and retaining great staff members, less money could have negative consequences. It depends on how you look at it. And then the mill rate averages during the past school year, as you've heard from Jeff, our mill rate was $2.34. The Union High School average was $3.42. The Wisconsin average for all school districts was $8.64 last year. That's not an apples to apples comparison for Arrowhead being only four grade levels where most districts are K-12 grade levels. So then if you take Arrowhead's mill rate plus the average of our K-8 feeder districts, the average is $4.30, you add those together and you'll see Arrowhead and our K-8 still are $2 less than average school district in terms of mill rate. Similarly, rather than just union high schools, this slide could be considered good news or it could be considered <coughs> difficult or challenging news. Our uh, Arrowhead or our Waukesha County School Districts, as Jeff explained, we are lower funded than most of our peers. That's perhaps good for taxpayers, may not be good for our school or facilities, how we're educating students um, over time may not be good for property values depending on what happens with our school system. It's all from your, your perspective if this is good or negative news. Uh, one portion that I think is important for community members to understand 
the arrowhead portion of your tax bill, when you look at your property tax bill, you'll have your municipality, what you're paying to, I'm in the town of Delafield. Here's what I pay to the town of Delafield. Here's what I pay to Arrowhead. Here's what I pay to my KK Theater District. Uh, WCTC is probably on there. So the Arrowhead portion of your bill, as a taxpayer, I would think that all goes to Arrowhead. It actually does not. About $347,000 that's in Arrowhead's name actually goes to private schools. And you can see the, the different names of programs from our local property taxes and federal grants that we must share as a public school, we must share with private schools. Uh, again, another slide, you might consider this good information if you're a supporter of private schools and voucher programs, fabulous. If you're not, or if you feel like Arrowhead's tax bill should go to Arrowhead, it might not be great news. It's just not very transparent on your tax bill. But even though we have less funding coming in than many area schools, we have excellent student achievement. Um, in terms of standardized test scores, you can see some comparisons. Our ACT average composite for seniors, so there's always a senior score. It doesn't include all seniors. It includes those that are taking the ACT to go on to college uh, during the 2021 school year. And I should qualify. This data is always lagging one year behind because it's all pulled from the Department of Public Instruction. It's very official numbers, but it's always lagging a year behind. So this last school year, we were the highest in of our area districts for ACTs for seniors. Uh, for juniors, where it's a state required test, every junior takes that assessment. If you're in a public school, we were the second highest. We tend to bounce back and forth first or second highest of ACT scores. And then advanced placement exams, we tend to be right at the top or second to the top of those scores. My AP classes are college level classes that are held here at the high school. So they're very rigorous. Students can take a test at the end of the class. And if they earn on a one to five scale, if they earn a three, four or five, it's considered passing and they actually get college um, credit for it if they go on to college, that AP class can count toward college coursework. So that data is lagging behind a year. Here's a preview of Arrowhead advanced placement exams because we know our scores. We won't know the scores of other districts for another year. Uh, we had 1,255 exams taken. Our passing rate of three, four, or five was 86%. You can see all our different tests that are noted. Some of them have a dash by number taken. That's because of its under six students, we don't show how many students because it, it could breach confidentiality. For instance, if Art 3D showed one student, we would all know huh, that one student earned a five, 100% passing rate. Uh, so we need to protect that confidentiality with our numbers. Another question that might arise as you look at this list, wow, we have a Japanese class? No, we actually don't. Students can take an AP test without ever having the class. So we have some classes on this list that students may take the exam even though they didn't take the class. Or we have students that take, for instance, Japanese test, don't even offer the class. So that's just some uh, background information about these scores. So that was a glimpse of student achievement in terms of standard testing uh, scores. Here's some more information about student participation and just overall successful education. Arrowhead's graduation <coughs> rates are higher than state average, very consistently. Our high school enrollment, post high school enrollment, students that are going into college, this last year, was about 75% moving forward into post high school education. 
that's lower than our average. Normally, we're about 10% higher than that. However, if you look across the state, it dropped on a pretty consistent level. Why? Well, if you think about COVID and how many colleges were only doing online learning, it appears that there were many students that decided at the end of that school year to do a gap year. So I don't want to go to college and learn from a computer. That's not college life. I'm going to work for a year. I'm going to travel for a year, whatever they decided to do. That seems to be the, the reason why across the state and perhaps nation, I don't know for sure, that it appears less students are going into immediately into college. But of our students that do go into college, about 91% uh, go to a four-year school, about 9% into a two-year school, and a small percentage, less than 1%, can do both. They might start at one and, and transfer to another. Obviously, quite a bit higher than state averages. Our attendance rate is better than state average in terms of dropouts and absenteeism. And our discipline rate. This one, when I saw it, I thought, oh, no world, there must be an error. Normally, our student discipline rate is about one and a half percent. That's the percentage of students that have more extreme discipline, suspensions, expulsions. Uh, so our discipline rate went up by about a percent. The state average normally is six or seven percent. So as a superintendent, when I saw the state average at 1.7, I thought, what in the world? There's no way Arrowhead students are naughtier than the state average. I know for sure. Well, after a little bit of digging and reflection, Guess what? This school year, large percentage of students were not in school. They were learning from home. Think about Milwaukee Public Schools, our largest school in the state school system. Those students didn't even have the opportunity to have in-person learning until April or May. There's not a lot of discipline problems in school when the kids aren't in the buildings. So that is a school leader, that makes me feel a little better about uh, looking worse in terms of student discipline when our kids were here every day and other schools were not. So some additional academic highlights. 73.6% of our graduating class earned a GPA of 3.0 or higher. We have high performing students. They take their learning seriously. They work really hard. Some national uh, recognitions that are pretty typical for Arrowhead. US News and World Report again named Arrowhead as one of the best high schools in the nation. We're a top STEM or science, technology, engineering, and math school. The Washington Post again named Arrowhead as one of the most challenging high schools. And that's a lot about how many advanced placement tests you offer. Our Wisconsin Accountability Report Card, we're one of a um, small number, it's not more than, it's much more than a dozen high schools, get to the level of being considered significantly exceeds expectations. And this last year, we had 12 National Merit Scholarship semifinalists, and that's of only 15,000 across the whole nation. Carol had had a dozen. So great job to our students and staff. Beyond academics, we have other things we like to uh, share and boast about. Our kids and our school take community service very seriously. It's a win-win. It's good for our kids to conduct community service. They gain from that. That's a good character building. It's also good for the community and for the charities um, that our students work toward and donate toward. So just a few examples. Our girls swim and dive team participated in a make a wish event. They raised over $8,000 by the running and walking. Student Senate and National Honor Society ran several food drives. They collected thousands of food items for local food pantries. Considering all of our clubs and classes and athletic teams, they volunteered cumulatively over 100 projects contributing more than 5,000 total hours, and those projects, dozens of them, but ranged from hosting a free event for veterans to collecting 300 pairs of socks for homeless shelters, 
to raising $108,000 in just two golf tournaments for the MAC Fund. Really proud of our students. Some visual and performing arts accolades to share. Our drama and Broadway companies, two different teams or departments, activities, both put on musicals and both were fabulous and they both earned best musical awards in the Jerry Awards program. Our instrumental music program was elected or chosen to perform at Carnegie Hall, a great experience for high schoolers. And our visual artwork, impressive as ever and um, as a regular occurrence, we had students earning both state and national honors for their artwork. Our athletic programs continue to be strong. State champions this past school year included boys ski team, girls ski team, and boys track and field. Plus 11 students were individual state champs in their uh, respective sports. State runner up so where we took second place, boys swim, girls swim, and then in addition to those five teams that were first or second place in state, we had additional state qualifiers being volleyball, boys volleyball, field hockey, gymnastics, wrestling, and boys tennis. Lots of success in our athletic programs. Um, and some athletic recognitions that I feel are personally really good to see. Um, Beyond just like our Classic 8 championships, 11 of our teams were Classic 8 champs. But important, I think, is sportsmanship awards. And this year, our boys golf team earned the sportsmanship award. That's the type of skill that lasts a lifetime. And we had 10 student um, scholar athletes. Those are seniors that have participated in at least two sports, have not had any kind of discipline issues where they've been kicked off the team and maintain a 3.0 or higher. So congratulations to those 10 student scholar athletes. A few staff members to recognize. We have hundreds of staff members and we could recognize everyone because they're all so fantastic. But this year we'll highlight three. Coach Mike Breaker is retiring after 44 years of coaching at Arrowhead. Within those years, he served as the head coach for girls golf, led them to qualifying for state tournaments 19 times. Ms. Katie Herman is an English teacher. She earned a Herb Cole Fellowship Award. That award gets her $6,000 personally and $6,000 for our English department for uh, a program that she would like to develop or spend it on. And every year we choose uh, one or two teachers of the year. And this year the committee elected or um, chose to recognize our school psychologist, Kevin Lewandowski, as the 21-22 school year teacher of the year. And in wrapping up, I'm looking at community members. Part of our Arrowhead experience is you, the supportive community and generous community. We have many volunteers that help make our school work. We have donors, uh, financial donors, and just a community of solid members who care about Arrowhead and who care about education for children. One example is our Arrowhead Scholarship Foundation awarded about $90,000 in scholarships this year to about 90 students. That's excellent. Thank you to the Scholarship Foundation, ASF, but thank you to community members who donated and businesses who donated. And during this last school year, many thousands of dollars were donated by generous individuals and organizations. Just a few examples who, were, who reaped benefits from donations. Our ICE Center, Hockey Families, our athletic and co-curricular programs, for, uh, not earned, but had donations received. Graduation celebrations, donations went in to make those happening. Our Design Engineering Manufacturing Center were awarded some donations and our fine arts programs. So thank you to the community to help helping Arrowhead be as strong as it is. And I'll wrap up where I started, our mission. So looking at the school year ahead, our mission remains to empower students to be engaged, confident, continuous learners who utilize the essential skills to collaborate and contribute in our local and global community. 
This next school year will focus on plenty, but on the slide I'm highlighting three topics. We'll focus on college career and life readiness through academic rigor and life skills enhancement, a positive learning culture, integrated technology to support learning, and academic and career exploration for students. We'll also focus on successful engagement of all students in their academic and social, emotional, and behavior endeavors within our school. And we'll focus on our continued prioritized responsible project planning and spending of the referendum monies that were trusted to us by the community. So we plan to have a fantastic school year at Arrowhead Ahead. I hope you have a fantastic school year and thank you for your interest so much. Thank you, Laura. Um, next on the agenda here is old business. So just open it up to the community here. If you have any questions for the board or administration here, we'll try to answer them to the best of our knowledge here. If there is something that's outstanding, we will look for those answers later on. So um, just show of hands of anyone that wants to pose a question, and I'll come over with my hand so everyone can hear it. So I guess after the thank you, Jeff, for the budget presentation, and Laura, thank you so much for the, the year in review. Um, I heard a lot tonight about uh, re possible referendum going forward, and I understand that the state of Wisconsin is in continuous conversation regarding school funding and things like that. I guess I would challenge the board and the administration to present some options just in case we do not go to referendum or it's not the, uh, the will of the board to go forward to referendum. Um, I see we are declining in enrollment. Um, we've been doing that for quite some time. Um, staffing costs continue to go up uh, and we've lost, I think, 40 students or almost 90 students and, you know, staffing costs continue to go up. Um, I know that our facilities and buildings and grounds, I mean, that's been mentioned quite a bit tonight. And uh, thank you for continuing to support that, putting the $2 million that was earned from the uh, sale of the land into Fund 46. Uh, thank you for doing that. And uh, I would also encourage the board to continue to put into Fund 41. Um, I see that we are putting, or the recommendation is to put in 300000 approximately, but then pull it out right away um, in that in the same fiscal year. So uh, again, please try to continue to build up your, your facilities uh, as it relates to um, all of our academic areas to continue to engage students at a high level uh, in a great learning environment. So I guess I just would like to, you know, hear, not tonight, not tonight, but as we move into uh, finish up this fiscal year and get the budget all set for next year, but what is the board considering as we begin to think about moving forward in a possible another zero budget? Uh, as we think about getting a zero revenue increase to uh, the revenue limit, um, what are options? What is on the table? And uh, I guess I just would like to hear more about that in the future about what those options might be. Just to, in case we don't get the, you know, Jeff, I think mentioned maybe a five, you know, trying to make up for past years. Um, as we heard from uh, Senator Kapenga and uh, Duco, I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, I'm just here, curious about what those options would be and uh, interested in what those might be. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Uh -oh. oh, okay. Second. <laughs> no, no, it's, um, uh, I just want to build on the last, uh, the last comment, and I think it's more of a general audience, um, because I'm, I'm, I'm always with the program when it comes to a uh, scenario, like, we need to know what the options are, so I'm with that program, um, but I do encourage the audience uh, and our community to continue to lobby our legislators uh, to get a more favorable outcome um, for funding our schools, schools properly. So that is a call to a uh, call to our community to do that. Thank you. Thank you, John. Anyone else from the audience that would like to speak? All right, going once. 
Great. Well, thank you for everyone's um, comments. Move on to the next agenda items here. Just give me a minute. Well, my apologies. Um, there is one agenda item that I missed out on, and that is uh, the procedure to set the annual um, meeting day. Um, we want to have a motion to allow the Board of Education to set the date and time between May 15th and October 31st, 2023, for the, for the um, next year's annual meeting. So Tim Langer, do I have a second? Second. Amy Hammer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion carries. All right, um, now we're going to move on to new business. We have um, three things that we're going to touch upon here. First one is district owned textbooks. Can I get a motion to approve the following schedule is recommended for um, books, book tax rental at $55 per review. So moved. Rick Thompson. And can I get a second? Second. Tim Langer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion carries. Second, salaries of the school board members. The annual meeting establishes the salaries of the school board members. At the present time, annual salaries are established at $3,000. Four hundred dollars per board member. Discussion. Can I get a motion? Trevor right. Anderson. Can I get a second? Oh, Kim Schubert for a second. All right, excellent. Um, all in favor? I can hear exactly what you so much to move the right. Troy Two. Proof of theory for okay. Still second, Kim? All right. All in favor? All right. Opposed? All right. Motion carries. Third item tax levy for the ensuing year. Tax levy for the capital expansion fund, um, which can be found on page 18 of the annual report document, in the amount of 300000 is recommended for the ensuing school year. Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to set the capital fund or capital expenditure fund for more than 400,000. Okay, we have 400,000. Second. For Anders, for the um, 400,000? All right. Um, all in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, discussion? Okay. We'll just have to find $100,000 to come out of the operating budget to shift over into fund 41. So reducing operating expenditure somewhere in the amount of $100,000. Well, I'm not sure where it's gonna come from, but we'll have to work on that. That motion can from uh, just continuing to, again, build that facility on specifically for facility. Um, again, bolster fund 41 by an additional $100,000 Actually, uh, Jeff again. Maybe if you would be able to. Uh, it's difficult to put you on the spot, but where did the three hundred thousand dollars number come from? Was there? Uh, can you give us a little guidance on where that number came from? Yeah, it, it's a uh, an annual amount. We kind of stuck to that amount. It's it's really intended to. We we put it toward roofing always. Um, what doesn't get covered in Fund Forty One? It's covered out of the operational budget in fund 10. So 41, what it does is it allows you to spread your expenditure into future years. I've not been a big favor of spreading expenditures into the future uh, for eight purposes. Um, it, it will continue to plague us in the aid formula going forward. So 
the longer you have a fund 41, it just uh, impacts your aid formula into future years when you may not even be using it. Um, so that's why uh, we've done a lot on fund 10 rather than fund 41. Uh, if you're going to put money aside for capital expenditures, I would propose putting it into fund 46. Take the expenditure hit now, not push it into the future, and then you've got funds for capital improvements in fund 46. But uh, both are options to consider. Any other discussion? Um, all in favor of um, the tax levy for the capital expansion fund in the amount of $400,000 for the ensuing school year. Aye. Aye. I'm sorry, Amy? Aye. Aye. Okay. Anyone else? Opposed? Aye. 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 Okay. okay, let's go back here. Let's get, uh, let's get a show of hands. So the, the ones in favor for uh, 400000 you just leave your hands up so I can count? Leave your hands up here. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, did you ten. Did you get your hand up there? No, you did not. Well, I have ten. Six, I had one. Five, seven, eight, nine, ten. You have ten. I have ten. Okay. And then for um, three hundred. No, now you want. Oh, the names. I'm sorry. Sorry. Nays, can I have a show of hands? Keep your hands up, up, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, so thirteen. Does not pass. Does not pass. Can I get another? Does anyone want to make a motion? But I would make a motion. I would appreciate the sentiment expressed by the asking. I would instead move that we fund like uh, 46 with an additional $3,000. So the motion is to uh, add an additional one hundred thousand dollars to fund forty six uh, for capital purposes, and then tonight to approve the three hundred thousand dollar funding of the capital expansion fund. So I would second that. Yeah, Chris Ferris for a second. All right. Um, let's have a vote here and let's do a um, discussion. Discussion. Yeah, the end of the year, the 46 happened at the end of the year. Is that something that has to happen at the board level before the board would levy at the 46? Yeah, the board would not levy in the 46. It would be uh, an expenditure adjustment within Fund 10 to show a transfer out to 46 of 100,000. So okay. it wouldn't be, so it would be, it would fit in with the fund 10 levy. So um, if you left the 41 levy at 30, 300,000 and the fund 10 levy at the uh, 16 million 933, which that also includes fund 38. Um, so it would just be an expenditure line item uh, increasing the transfer to fund 46 to by $100,000. It wouldn't be a levy issue. No, you would just leave fund 41 levy as is, fund 10 levy as is, and then do an expenditure adjustment, uh, reducing expenditures somewhere else to put it into fund 46 as a transfer, but not a levy. How easy would that be to, to do? I mean, you gave an awful detail. Their homes, uh, what we could do, we, we can find a way. Um, because we spend so much out of fund 10 on facilities already, maybe we have to reduce that by $100,000 and put it into 46. Um, and then, you know, it's there for the future or it's there for a project need right away. But it's going to take an expenditure cut somewhere to come up with $100,000. So we, we can look at all areas, including staffing, including. Uh, all areas of the budget. And I would just say, I think my key is that I don't know if I'm asking for uh, the motion, but I think the motion is for it to sit for future, not to not to use, okay, we'll take $100,000 out of this year's budget 
and just move it out to facilities. I think at least my spirit, my first motion was to save 100000 out of this budget for sure because there wasn't any facility savings. I got surpluses last year. I think we kept that in front of But um, I guess the intent in the 46 is for future, not to use it this year. Okay, I appreciate the moment. It seems like you want that way to start votes this year. Any other, any other discussion? Tim, would you mind restating what you had proposed so we can do the vote? I can repeat what I had said. I'm wondering if it's a problem. The, the fund 46 transfer wouldn't that be part of a budget motion, not, not a levy motion. So you'd be a levy for 41, you'd want to set a levy amount for that, and then you want to set a, a levy amount for the remaining portions of the budget to include debt service. Okay, so, so at, the should... board's, at the board's discretion, at the board's discretion, when you're approving the, the final budget in October. You could then decide to shift money around. That would be the school board discretion. Understood. Step forty one. Uh, right. Step forty one. I think the school board can. I'm talking forty six. Yeah. Thanks for that. Forty six. Forty six is the time that you would be able to go to school board. So I think if I've got to modify my motion, the first thing I need to do is ask for the first and second and the motion to withdraw their second. I withdraw. And then I'll withdraw the motion, and I will uh, stick to the script this time. And move that the tax levy levy for capital expansion fund uh, in the amount of three hundred thousand dollars be approved. Can I get a second? I'll second. Chris Marius has a second. And let's um do this in a vote. All in favor? Please. Okay, more discussion. Okay. Uh, thank you. And again in October, if uh, you could, you know, again the board has the complete purview to uh, levy hundred grand in the fund forty six for each. Any other discussion? All right, show your hands all in favor. Keep right. those hands up. I don't think we need to count if it's the majority. Yeah. Is there any, right. if you, if, unless okay. there's no. Opposed? All right, motion carries. The other item is tax levy for operations and long-term debt service in the amount of $16,933,890 is recommended for the ensuing school year. The total 22-23 um, tax levy is proposed to be $17,233,890 with the inclusion of capital expansion levy. Okay, give a second. Right down for a second. Discussion? All in favor, say aye or raise your hands. Aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Um, any other new business? Go ahead. There's been recent discussion about Arrowhead adopting Pemorane's new concept policy 651 that states that the student is quote unquote socially transitioning, meaning referring to transitioning gender wise. I'm not, it's very vague. Um, I believe it's being discussed at the next meeting. I would like to hear every single member of the school um, board's definition of social transition because I would like, I think we would all benefit from knowing what we're either speaking for or against at the next meeting. Thank you. Yeah. So I think I can speak. Uh, I'll, I'll speak briefly for myself and then uh, uh, pass it on to, to others. So this uh, this policy is not uh, close to being adopted yet. There's a lot of discussion and things that have to happen internally. 
uh, the bare bones of the first paragraph of this policy is very similar to the policy that the school has currently. So we're working directly with administration to come up with verbiage that the whole board can have a further discussion on to have a more complete uh, look at what this policy is going to mean. It's going to be probably stripped down a lot and a lot more simplistic. Uh, the piece that you're speaking to uh, it, it, at this point is neither in nor out. I know I'm not answering your question directly, uh, but because this policy is, is still in the works, I think it would be uh, premature to go any further. Thank you. I think our policy that we're looking at is a good one. I want to leave this kind of stuff at the doorstep and just focus on educating kids and not bring the politics or any of the wokeism into our schools. I guess I would just agree with Chris that there's a lot of uh, development that still needs to happen. It's not even close to be final at this point. I would encourage everybody that wants to learn more about this to attend the next policy meeting. Um, I don't believe this is going to be uh, voted on next week. However, that might change. You know, but at the end of the day, it's still a policy that needs a lot of work. I would, I would second some of the comments that were made and encourage everyone uh, to come to our meetings, uh, both the committee meetings as well as our, our board meetings um, and the meeting before the board meeting, which is a really good opportunity for just discourse that is back and forth where the board can respond. Um, but I think directly to your question, I think in my mind, what it does is spawns the realization that perhaps we need better definition of terminology so that it's prompting questions already just on that very aspect. Perhaps we need to define that better. So I thank you for bringing that to our attention. Yeah, I would, I would just add to that, not disagree with anything that, that anyone said already. It, it, it doesn't, from what I understand of the proposal, it, it doesn't limit, it doesn't change anything. The only thing that it, it really does is make sure that there is parental or guardian awareness of, of what the student is essentially asking the, the school to be aware of. It, it's, there's not anything stopping the process as long as the parent has the approval uh, in the committal of or with the student to do so and uh, again it's still under very early development i think there's some a lot of rumor mills out there of what what kettle moraine did and this is going to be a carbon copy of that i, I think that is complete uh rumor out of everything that I've read and been a part of the discussion so far. So I wouldn't look at what Kevin Marine did as what's coming here. This is really just making sure that parents are aware of what their student is doing in the school. And I think the next time this will be for discussion is in the, correct me if I'm wrong, is the next policy meeting, which is slated for, I think it's um, September 8th, is that? September 7th, and then the school board meeting September 1st. Okay. In the policy meetings, those are um, around 6.45 in the morning that we have those committee meetings. Policy, like with all the other ones as well. Um, someone else had their hand raised, I think. That was me, but I wanted to know when the committee meeting was for, for this next thing. So it's in. I'm wondering how a policy like this could be political. It's what it is identified as. I wouldn't say it's, I don't know how politics even enters into it. It's, it's identity. It's not politics. And I think wokeism is not a word that we use anymore. That went out like four years ago. M-A-R-K. Thank you, Susan. I think there was a person back here. You're just having a I was actually interested in the word wokeism too. Uh, Ms. Hemmer, could you please define what that means? 
Jacqueline. Well, to me, it's like there's a certain political agenda that's going on with this land. Yes. There's a certain political agenda here. And sexuality is kind of being promoted by one side um, in an effort almost to destroy the family, which is my opinion. Um, I just look at what we should be doing in school as educating our children and leaving politics outside of this. The sexual identity or if you're transitioning or anything like that should not be the forefront of who you are or what you're doing in the schools. We want to educate the kids. That's the most important thing, I think. We don't want activists in our schools. We don't want um, things that are actually destroying the family is what I think. My opinion again, but that's how I feel. Um, this kind of stuff never happened in schools years ago. And now all of a sudden it's like the forefront. And I think it's, it's displacing what we're really trying to do, like learn, reading, writing, arithmetic, history, whatever. When someone's sexual identity becomes forefront, I think that's kind of wrong. And that's not what should be promoted in our schools or encouraged in our schools. And that's the way I feel. And that's, as a board member, that's what I'm going to stand up for. And I do believe that is wokeism. It's kind of a type of, um, it is political, I feel. And I feel like I, as a board member, have to stand up against that because I don't agree with it. And I don't think our children should have to be encouraged almost like, when did this gender shifting ever happen? Like you're encouraged to be, if you don't feel like you're a boy, then you can be a girl or whatever. It's, it's more encouraged, which it's kind of it. Years ago, it was just growing up. Girls were tomboys and you didn't, promote that like okay you feel you're, like you're a tomboy you're going to be a boy so at what point is that i don't know it, it, it's very hard to explain but i just don't agree with what's going on in schools and some schools nowadays and i don't think it should be encouraged i don't think it should be in the forefront i think we should just be working on educating our kids and not the social activism in schools and I think that the wokeism is part of that. So I hope that answers your question. Ms. Hummer, do you believe that the act of a, um, say like a 15 year old child asking a teacher freely themselves to use a different name and a different set of pronouns is political, is a political act of said child? Well, I don't think that's political in a sense, but I don't feel like that should be encouraged or promoted, I guess you could say. I think um, kids these days are messed up enough with what went on with COVID and everything like that. And then what's going on with sexuality. And it seems like that's becoming more and more in the forefront and I think that's wrong. I, I just don't agree with what's going on and teaching these kids like you can be whatever sex you want to be and there's all these different genders. I just personally don't agree with that. I think there's biological sexes, male and female. And if children are telling someone that they want to be something else, well, there might be a little bit of an issue there and their parents should know about that. Hi, as a parent in the district, I just want to caution you as a board member. Um, it's your job as a board and as board members to accept all of our students, regardless of how you may personally feel about choices that they make in and outside of school. I agree with you that promoting and encouraging and things like that can be challenging for some people to wrap their heads around, but it is your job to accept 
all of our students, regardless of your personal feelings. So just I, when you make policies and decisions, I hope that we remember that not everyone is the same and that is a really good thing because if everyone was the same, it would be very boring. And I don't want to live in a world where everyone's the same. I like people that are different and accept people that are different. So please keep that in mind when you're making your decisions. Oh, I totally agree with you that everyone should be accepted. But when it comes to the point where you have to agree with everything, otherwise you are ostracized, that's when it gets to be wrong. That, okay, if someone wants to be a different sex or whatever, fine for them, let them live their life. I don't care how anybody lives their life, but when it comes to be like you're forcing it on everyone else to say, oh, this is wonderful, that's when it gets to be wrong. But I do agree that we should accept all kids and help them when needed. And if they're going through a hard time, help them when needed. And But we are in the job of educating kids. We're not out here for activism. We're not out here to promote one lifestyle over another. That's just what I'm saying. Just a quick, quick comment. Um, relating it back to the policy itself. Um, the board is taking into consideration all. It's the team. That's what Arrowhead, the Arrowhead experience has always been. Uh, it, it's one. And, and so we're looking at everybody, uh, but the crux of the policy itself is meant by design to be inclusive also of parents. The very beginning of, the, of that, um, that policy very specifically includes parents and their and parental consent. And I think that that's how it's always supposed to be and how it should be moving forward. I think parents should be part of the equation. So again, it's, it's really not um, that there is a consideration for all. In fact, I think we're uh, broadening the scope of all as we promote a policy. I understand that I may have brought this policy up prematurely, but now I'm kind of glad I did because I think it brought forth a pretty clear agenda of one, if not more members of the board. And I'd also like to make the point that the reason why this didn't happen like years ago is because we've started walking around with our phones. So now there's always a camera when someone calls a kid a faggot or shoves them in a locker. There's always someone around to show them what they're doing, to show someone what they're doing. So now that's why that's changed. That's why people are able to be more open and free about who they are. And that has nothing to do with politics. That has nothing to do with wokeness. That has nothing to do with the way the world changes or who's president or anything. That just has to do with people being safer because their other people's actions are more documented. I would like to just make the board aware that it's very likely that if this policy would be passed, that the suicidality of students at Arrowhead might actually be increased because um, a huge factor in a transgender child, whether or not they're going to be suicidal, is based on whether or not they are accepted. There's like a bunch of different factors, whether or not they're gendered correctly, how they're treated at school, how they're treated at home, et cetera, et cetera. And a huge way that a school could be capable of preventing suicide from students who are transgender is allowing them to be the gender they are at school and giving them that choice. Because that, you know, it's hard to understand if you are not transgender, but that is huge. And that's really why so many transgender kids and it's 56% uh, attempt suicide and 86% have suicidal ideation, which is huge. And I think it should be a huge goal of the uh, school board to try to prevent suicide amongst its own students. And when the bullying at Arquette High School has, personally I've witnessed, has been at a whole all time high this past year and will almost certainly get worse throughout the school year. And it is definitely targeted at LGBT students, I think they should really try to do as much as they can to try to help these children. And when they are not given a chance to be who they are at school, that's just going to hurt them even more. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Uh, 
I have a twin sibling and they had to, due to bullying at, the, at school, they had to move to online learning before the end of the semester. And that absolutely broke me to see them not even be able to like come with me on the ride to school or anything. They would just have to sit at their home at home in their room because there's nothing else to really do to get their work done. And it's just that affects somebody so much more, that ability to not feel comfortable where you're supposed to be learning and growing. Then someone feels a little uncomfortable by what someone's wearing or their name or their pronouns. If you don't like someone's pronouns, don't refer to them. If you don't like someone's name, don't speak to them. I just, I don't know what else to say about that. Thank you. Thank you for everyone's input um, uh, on this subject matter. And I think with everyone on the board here, we'll take everyone's thoughts and consideration here during the next, next policy meeting. Um, anyone else? Otherwise, can I get a motion? Oh, I'm sorry, Chris. I do have one feature that I do not get. Um, so on September 21st, uh, 2018, um, I, I, I for, for those of you that don't know me, I have uh, three girls that are seniors this year. Um, and one of their very best friends on September 21st, uh, 2018, died um, from somewhat unknown causes, even to this day. Um, and so I would like to uh, take up a motion to discuss as a board uh, the, the idea of um, of presenting at the graduation in 23, Emily solved her family with an honorary diploma from Arrowhead High School. Um, her sister is in college, um, and I have not yet, my, my wife is good friends with this family. Uh, I've not yet broached it with them, um, but I, I, I feel like um, it would do a great honor to Emily, uh, who was a great kid, uh, and died way too young. So that's uh, uh, something I'd like to bring up for future future business. Anything else? Um, just a reminder too, we will have our regular board meeting and community um, talk next Tuesday. Um, so just, um, again, that starts at 6.30 with the regular board meeting at 7 p.m. on Tuesday. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Can I get it? What is your name, sir? Jordan. Jordan Anderson, okay. And can I get a second? A second. Just for a second, sir. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. All right. Maybe all in favor of adjourning? All right. All right. Motion carries. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.